What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. For those that are just joining us, this is our 2009 Chevy Trailblazer 4.2 inline six, complete with a custom turbo kit. Uh, currently it is not intercooled, but soon we are planning to change that. In today's episode, I am going to talk to you about things that I have encountered since installing this, driving it, putting some miles on it, and just kind of going over some of the things that have broke and some of the issues I've had. Uh, that way, if you choose to boost this Trailblazer, you can kind of uh, know what to expect. Uh, maybe do things a little bit different than me. Nothing crazy, nothing major, uh, but enough to at least take some notes of and maybe learn from. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The first issue I had is I thought, hey, you know what? I can keep the AC. Um, I'll just, you know, wrap a lot of this stuff in some heat tape or some heat shielding. You can see the AC line back here going to the firewall. Now, I have the turbo blanket off of it, but I did have a turbo blanket installed. I just pulled it off temporarily. And right here, you can see where that back line uh, was sitting on the turbo blanket. Now, I thought with the turbo blanket and the line wrapped, it would be fine. And granted, this is loose. I, I just unbolted it. I slid it up as far as I could. Well, unfortunately, uh, that line blew. I was at a gas station, the car was actually off, and uh, filled it up with the 85, started the car back up, and as soon as I started, I heard a big boom. And at first I thought it was a coolant line, but fortunately it was not. It was just this AC line, because I was about 40 miles away from home. There's green dye and uh, refrigerant everywhere. And since then I have not had AC. So I'm actually gonna take this off and finally look at where it blew. I assume it just got hot and then uh, ruptured the line. It is under pressure. So as soon as, it, as, soon as that line loses any uh, integrity, it's just gonna blow. Well, here it is on the back side of this line. I think it is safe to say that it is far too hot. Uh, to be resting on the turbo blanket. Now, we definitely knew this was a potential uh, failure point, but this is what it looks like. This is where it blew. Uh, right now, I think I'm just gonna leave it open for now, maybe cap off that line and then uh, run without AC for a little bit. All right, and the last issue, uh, the major issue at least that I had was uh, actually a coolant line. Now, I knew routing this line was gonna be questionable, but for the sake of getting it done, getting it running, getting it tested, uh, I kind of just routed it this way. So you'll see what I mean here in a second. Now, here are the heater core lines, right? There's a, a feed to the heater core and a return. Not sure which one is which. Unfortunately, they run right on top of the wastegate dump. So the manifold has a, a piece that uh, kind of turns down. This is where the wastegate turns to and the wastegate uh, dumps. You know right here I, now eventually i want to put a pipe that dumps it down but you know i don't really don't have anything right now but one of these coolant lines we were driving it the other day and i was like man i feel like i smell a little bit of coolant and uh sure enough we we got to AutoZone and it was dripping just a little bit of coolant so much like the ac line i'm pretty sure this top coolant line here uh where it's been resting on the manifold has burned through and uh unfortunately uh, ruptured a, a, a hole in the in the, the hose uh, so if that's the case I'm not sure if I'm going to fix this or if I am going to just delete the heat altogether um, I may just run it with no heat and no AC and just focus on getting it uh, running a little bit faster with the intercooler um, not sure what you guys think I mean I, I'm a really big fan of like having everything work uh, but all the windows roll down the sunroof opens. So I prefer AC over the heat I really wanted everything to work, but the, it's just such a tight package in here And this is anyone that's gonna run, you know an RTEC manifold or you know boost one of these in general This is these are you're gonna have some of these same issues. So this is what I'm this is why I'm bringing it up um, now you could run hard lines right and then you know, connect them to the quick connects that go to the heater core through the firewall. Uh, but either way, you know, it's it's gonna be a tight fit. Now, you can make your fitment a little bit easier and not go with a four inch exhaust like we did. However, you will potentially sacrifice some performance. Now, the four inch exhaust for this turbo, I think it, it sounds incredible. It's, I, I think performance wise, uh, I wouldn't wanna go any smaller, um, but, 
I can definitely see the benefit just because of the of the packaging. Now, if you don't want to run a full exhaust, and let's say you want to, you know, come down or turn it down and come out of maybe up here on the fender or, you know, somewhere else and, and you don't want to turn it down or if you want to do like a hood exit which is also going to be extremely tight you'd really mainly be coming out of the cowl uh that's a possibility and then you can run all the other stuff but I, I really want the exhaust to go out the back now that's also not finished yet currently it still just goes to it goes to the muffler which is right here and it turns out right there uh, but eventually we are going to run it out the rear bumper um, let's go ahead and get this line off, see what it looks like, and uh, kind of investigate the damage. All right, so it actually was that top line. Uh, now I've already cut the piece uh, downstream of where it was actually burnt, but here you can see, even though I had the fiberglass wrapping on it, uh, it resting on that manifold is obviously not a good idea. Uh, it only took a couple hundred miles for it to wear through, so I'm gonna pull this sheathing off so you can see now this is the hose itself and uh, I know the lighting isn't great but right around here it's it's just burned all the way through you can see the, the fibers and everything so uh, unfortunately not going to cut it so most likely what I'll do is I'm just gonna bypass the heater core uh, it's just too tight down there to try and make it work and I don't really want to spend too much time and try and make some hard lines and uh, and make it work really in florida we only need heat for like maybe one month cumulative out of the year so uh i think i'm just gonna just gonna go ahead and let the heat thing go um the ac that's gonna be a different beast um, we're gonna try and get a different accumulator and see if we can cut uh, how the lines come off of it and move them So how this line comes off this way, uh, kind of want to cut it here and turn it 90 degrees towards the firewall. Because right now with it going straight down, it rests on the turbo. But if you can get it kind of going up and then over, it'll follow the contour of the exhaust, but stay about three inches above it. It won't actually touch it. It won't come in contact with it. So that's the, the idea for the AC. But uh, for now, I think what we're going to do is... Uh, we're just going to keep moving forward on the progress for the air to water intercooler, um, get this heater bypassed and then, uh, get it back to the track. Cause I want to see, I want to see what it can do. Um, we're going to have a lot of this AC stuff out of the way. Now we may just go straight, straight for performance, keep it as much of a street car as possible. Maybe no AC, no heat, uh, pull some of the weight off. Now we do have some things that we're, we're going to put in soon. Um, I have an aftermarket radiator, so I'm going to get rid of the clutch fan. That's going to be huge in terms of uh, rotational weight because that clutch fan is huge. Now, if you guys are uh, curious, back in the day they did a uh, an article on how much power you could pick up on a Fox Body Mustang. Like, what was the cheapest bang for your buck? And the cheapest thing that you could do on a Fox Body Mustang uh, on a factory 302 V8 five-speed car um, was take the clutch fan off and put an electric fan. I think it netted you like 17 horsepower because you just, the motor didn't have to, to, to work so hard to spin that clutch fan. Now I will say there's pros and cons that, that clutch fan, it can move some air. Like it, it's got a lot of CFM pulling through the radiator. So I'm buying a Trailblazer SS fan setup, but I'm going to be on a 4.2 based, uh, aftermarket aluminum radiator uh, they sell them on like ebay and stuff they're they got really good reviews and then i'm going to wire in some electric fans that will also free up a bunch of space in the in the front of the motor so i may be able to down the road put an aftermarket intake manifold but that's that's way down the road um but yeah so these are just some of the issues we've had the last issue i actually didn't bring up um, and it's not really an issue it's just going to have to be a retune is we do have the flex fuel sensor installed. However, when we enable the flex fuel sensor, the car runs terrible. And the reason being is the tune is adjusted for fueling a specific way. So as soon as you enable the flex fuel sensor, it starts, a, it starts compensating for the actual content that it's seeing. 
So it could be 20, 30% ri richer and the vehicle's just not drivable at that point. So right now it's installed, but it's turned off. Uh, once we get back down to Jeremy, uh, maybe with the intercooler setup, we'll turn the car up more. Uh, we'll, we'll throw some more boost at it, maybe put a boost solenoid in it, um, and then have the flex fuel enabled. So it's constantly reading accurate uh, ethanol content. Down in Florida, it can vary like massive swings. Uh, so it'll keep everything happy, keep everything safe. And then the last thing is we have a transmission cooler which is gonna go in the back. Uh, so we're gonna, when we put the new radiator in, we're actually gonna pull the transmission lines off. It will no longer go through the radiator. Uh, it will have its own cooling system, its own fan, and that's gonna be mounted where the rear tire is. So that those are plans for the Trailblazer in the future. But if you're planning on doing this, uh, this mod to your Trailblazer, uh, uh, inline 6.4.2, just know that you're gonna have a constant battle with uh, real estate. There's just not a lot of room to work with. Uh, the motor's crammed in there. The engine bay is not that big. Um, and unfortunately, you're going to have to make some, you're going to have to make some sacrifices. Now, could you make it work? Absolutely. Like anything is possible. But for me, I, I just want it running, driving, you know, windows go up and down. I don't care about the heat. I do care about the AC, but uh, to be honest, the AC may not ever happen again, right? I may just pull all the AC components off. Uh, save some weight and then just go for, you know, try and go after some Trailblazer SS records. See if we can chop away and, and really get this thing into like some uncharted territory with a inline six turbo Trailblazer. Uh, but that's it. Uh, sorry I haven't been around much lately. Uh, my second daughter is actually potentially going to be born today. Uh, so we've been really busy selling a lot of stuff. Um, small updates, the five cylinder Colorado is gone. I sold it. Um, I'm not pulling the five cylinder build off the table, but at the end of the day, I wanted a regular cab short bed. I did not want an extended cab build. So uh, that's what I'm on the hunt for now. And I also had a 3.5. I really would prefer a 3.7. So I found one down in Tampa. Uh, it's like a 2012 regular cab short bed. It's an automatic. Um, I really would like to have a five speed manual, uh, but that's that's kind of uh, it's still in the back burner. I'm still focusing on the Trailblazer right now. Uh, have this intercooler here. This is the intercooler. It's been sitting outside for a couple days. I was test fitting some stuff. This intercooler is going to sit right behind the front grill, and then it's going to feed the air to water intercooler. This is sorry, I keep calling this intercooler. This is the heat exchanger. So this heat exchanger is going to sit right behind the front grill. It's going to get like a whole bunch of air going to it. We'll be able to pull heat off of the intercooler system. Uh, this will feed the air to water intercooler. Uh, and then I have a small tank with a, a little uh, water pump that's actually used to circulate coolant in like a Tesla. Uh, I say coolant loosely. I think it's just some sort of system they have to keep the batteries cool. Uh, but that's, it's a tank from Whipple. Uh, a buddy of mine wasn't using it. Uh, if you guys watched my first intro video, you know what it looks like. Uh, but that's the, we have this all mapped out. We're going to get ready to do this in a little bit. Um, but that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Um, if you, you guys are new to the channel and you like what you see, give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section below uh, what you guys think. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.